And see, this is what drives people crazy. The rich got richer. Yeah, but if you look at the last four years in America, after the tax cuts, the poor got richer four times as fast as the rich because pro-growth policies actually help the people at the bottom. And we, we have a ton of data on this. Uh, and, and people just don't know these things. But like you said, we're good at making the economic, that's an economic argument, what I just did. And, and that's a math mm-hmm. argument, but the moral argument. So let's, let's let me go back well, to I that. Like, I like what you, yeah, well, let's talk about that because I try to say that what we need is a sort of, let's call it a moral realism. Moral realism about the human person. So what do we know about human beings? We're individual and we're also social. We are self-interested beings. You mentioned incentives. That's clearly why a lot of people do things. But we're also capable of altruism. We're capable of doing great things, but we're also not God. We are creative beings. um, And we can use that creativity for great purposes or for really bad purposes as well. We're also free. That's another thing that makes us very distinct. We have reason and we have will and we have all these qualities that make us distinctly different from the animals. So I think when you're talking about economics and economic policy and what type of economy you want, you need to take all those things into account. Socialism doesn't, right? Because socialism denies human liberty, it denies human creativity, it denies the idea that we're really free in any real sense of the word at all. It prioritizes equality as sameness rather than equality before the law. So, I mean, I think that pushing some of those arguments and really challenging the left to say, okay, you you say that you're really in touch with reality. Let's talk about what you think human beings are, because I think your understanding of human beings is deeply flawed, deeply mistaken, and it doesn't It's not a foundation on which you can really think seriously about economic life. If you deny self-interest, if you deny the fact of incentives, you're going to end up in a very miserable state. So how do you how do you um, respond to people when they say, well, when you say people are self-interested and you should encourage that, you know, how do you differentiate that from just being greedy and and taking advantage of others? Well, the thing I typically do is say, if you look at the way that someone like Adam Smith, the way he talked about self-interest, by the self, he didn't have in mind the sort of autonomous, radical utility maximizer that does nothing but calculate how they can make more money for themselves. Mm -hmm. By self-interest, he had a couple of things in mind. One is that people do look out for what is in their interests. Uh, It's natural that people do that. There's nothing wrong with people asking themselves, what's in my best interest? How can I realize that? That's not greed. That's simply a a reflection of looking at our needs and our wants and then trying to realize them. The other thing is that I always point out the self in self-interest. Who is this self? Well, this self is someone who usually comes from a family or has a family. They have interests which are economic, but some of those interests are not economic. They're interested in all sorts of other things besides economic advancement. So in other words, this self is this very complicated um, mixture of good motives, not so good motives, good behavior, good actions. They have their whole personal history. So in other words, when you think about self-interest in that way, you realize very quickly that this is not greed. And what's greed? Greed is the irrational desire for more of something that you either already have or you're placing so much value on upon something, whether it's money or sex or whatever it happens to be, you've attached so much value to it that you've lost perspective of what is really important. Self-interest is very, very different from greed in that sense. Greed is ultimately something that consumes you, it destroys you because you are valuing something much more than you should. But self-interest isn't that at all. It's a very, very different phenomenon. So I think we need to calibrate our language to explain that when we're talking about people pursuing their self-interest alongside lots of other people pursuing their self-interest and how all these different self-interests come into communication with each other, they enter trade with each other, they enter into exchange with each other. That's, I think, the one way we can talk about this that exorcises this language of greed and greed is good 
that many people associate with the very idea of self-interest. Right. So if I were to summarize the argument, the moral case for, for capitalism, it, it might go something like this. The outcomes are better for everybody. That, that, this, that, is, a, that is a data-driven fact. It's an undeniable fact, number one. But number two, it is a realistic view of human nature and allows humans to live as humans, meaning people that operate in their self-interest, uh, that freely exchange with one another and that choose their destiny and, you know, put in the put in American terms to pursue their happiness as they see fit. Right. 